So, I think it's time for us to get to doing a sequel to a book that I did last year. Well, a sequel that isn't Star Wars related. With that said, it's time to return to the grim, dirty world of Baxter Zevkenko. Still can't pronounce that pretty well. With Kill Baxter. Yet again, the book series is written by Charlie Human. The book takes place a little bit after the events of the first book. Baxter, having made a deal with the magical enforcement, is forced to go to Hexport, a reformatory military school where they basically teach you how to use magic here and there. It's sort of like a very dirty, grim version of Hogwarts filled with sex, drugs, and lots and lots of gunpowder. Baxter himself was looking for a kind of reward for having helped save the world, but no one seems to give a damn about the fact that, you know, he saved the world and things quickly go back to normal for him and everyone else. Well, not exactly for him. Him and his girlfriend, who we spent most of the entirety of the last book searching and trying to save, are having relationship problems as he feels she kind of owes him. And his best friend is kind of obsessed with trying to figure out this whole magic thing, while Baxter himself believes he doesn't even have the slightest bit of talent for it. And with that, Baxter is also trying to be a bit of a nicer person, which he needs to work on quite a lot. And being harassed by a wannabe chosen one who acts more like a jock bully doesn't really help, and his issues are quickly amassing, and he can't really use magic too well, which also adds a bit of a pain in his ass. Add on to that the rise of a faction of magical creatures that want to kill humans and take their place at the top of the world in order to get away from their forced segregation, and oh yeah, someone out there hunting down various magicians, and of course, Things are going to get quite violent, especially once the school is put under attack. And he has to call his old drunk body hunter friend Ronan in order to come save the day. Overall, the stakes are pretty high, but a lot of the background stuff... But a lot of that is getting background stuff until we get closer towards the end of the book. As Baxter's dealing with a great number of his issues, as well as the mess he's been strapping himself up in. I want to get, some, I want to get into something really quickly with Baxter's attitude. He starts the story trying to force himself to be a nicer person, and from there ends up wrapped up in even more craziness. There's a lot of points where he's doing quite literal self-exploration, digging into his own psyche in order to find his true self and unlike his magical potential and abilities. And again, it's uh, more of a plot about accepting yourself, as he's having issues dealing with what he learned about his own bloodlines in the previous book. And again, it's a story about where he learns to accept himself for good and ill. Which is a pretty decent, no plot message right there. Aside from that, it's a pretty good in-between book. There are definitely a number of things going on in the background, such as, again, the mounting tensions and everyone taking their battle lines. And in the end, Baxter decides to do what Baxter does and starts doing, trying to do his own thing in order to save the world and make a profit out of it. Honestly, like the last one, it's a pretty good read, but it makes me wonder how this is the landing in the next book and how the topic craziness and the climax of this one. Overall, as I said earlier, it's a good read, and the series does come highly recommended, although I am quite worried about how they'll stick the landing next time.